Hey, welcome back, CISSP wannabes. These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day. I'm Colin Weaver. Every single day, I give you two questions to ponder, contemplate, and think about. Let's get to it. Okay, question number one coming at you. It's a lot of words, so I'm going to go ahead and paraphrase. Click pause if you need to read it. But um, PCI DSS is a mandated information security standard that's really targeted towards people who accept uh, credit cards, you know, Visa, MasterCard, Discover, etc. And the primary purpose of DS, our PCI DSS is to go in and uh, protect c customers' credit card information as well as to reduce the amount or prevent fraud. Um, which of the following items that you see right here uh, per PCI DSS are allowed to be stored by the merchant? Okay, so go ahead and give that a read. When you're ready, click play. We'll break it down. Okay, first item on the list. Can you store the cardholder's PIN number? That's a negative. Um, how about the cardholder's credit card number in plain text? Also a super negative. Cannot do that. Next choice on the list is can you keep the cardholder's uh, credit card expiration date? Absolutely, you're allowed to store that. Uh, can you keep the full magnetic strip data? No, you cannot keep that. And then the next option on the list, can you store their CVV number, which is that you know, three or four digit number that you see on the back of a credit card? No, you can't store that either. Last two choices on the list, can you store the cardholder's name? Yeah, you betcha, you're allowed to do that. And can you store the cardholder's number in either a truncated or encrypted format? Yes, you may do that as well. Um, it does have to be protected, but you are allowed to store it. All right, so there you have it. You're allowed to store the cardholder's expiration date, you're allowed to store the cardholder's name, and you're allowed to store an encrypted or truncated version of their credit card number. If you want the full list of stuff that you're allowed to store uh, per PCI DSS, there is a link down below in the comments. Go ahead and check that out. And in particular, I recommend that you look at the, P, uh, the PDF document that's down there from PCI DSS and give that a look because it gives you a nice little table that summarizes all of this for you. Okay, let's move on to question number two. Question number two, pretty straightforward question. Of these choices that are listed, which of them is considered an administrative control? Click pause if you need to, then click play. We'll talk it through. All right, let's break it down. First item on the list, background checks. Absolutely, those are an administrative control. Second item on the list, network firewall. No, those are technical controls, or that is a technical control. Third item, audible alarms. No, that's more physical. Okay, not more physical, it is physical. Next batter up, security awareness training. You betcha, that's absolutely an administrative control. Physical security guards. Really? No. Physical. Looking at the last two choices on the list, we got risk management. Absolutely, that is an administrative control. And the very bottom item on the list is encryption of personnel records. Uh, that may trip you up because you're thinking that, oh, personnel records, that's administrative. No, we're talking about the encryption of those records, and that is very much a technical control. So there you have it. Two more questions down. PCI DSS, and what are you allowed to store? in order to be in compliance with that, and also going in and looking at uh, uh, what's, what are some examples of administrative controls. I hope you found these questions useful and helpful as you continue your studies in your CISSP. Definitely click on that like button down below. Subscribe if you want to get these every single day. I'll see you tomorrow.